Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the rendering kernels using the Octane integration in Unity. And for this scene, I've taken the robot from the docking bay example scene, and I've kind of uh, created a little robot lineup here with different materials on each robot so that we can kind of examine how the kernels affects the uh, rendering of those materials. So in this robot, we have an Octane diffuse material. On this one, we have an Octane specular material. And on this one, we have an octane glossy material. And for the most part, it looks pretty good, but you can see there are problems in the way that the specular material is rendering. It's transparent and it is glassy, but it's not really behaving in a physically accurate way. So part of the solution to that problem, of course, is switching the rendering kernel. But before we do that, let's take a look at the settings and where we can find them within the octane integration. So if we take a look in the hierarchy panel here, I've added a PBR render target. This has all the rendering settings for using Octane within Unity. So when I have it selected, I can go into the inspector and go down here to the kernel settings. And you can see we have direct lighting. We also have info channels, path tracing, and PMC. The direct lighting kernel, which is the default lighting kernel, uh, gives you very uh, realistic results for the most part. It is not unbiased though. So uh, it's not actually physically accurate in the same way that path tracing and PMC are but it does render faster than the other rendering kernels. Info channels kernels is kind of like a diagnostic tool. If I switch to info channels, you can see that from the type menu, I can select different ways to view the scene. So the default is wireframe, but we can also check out, say the normals or uh, material ID can be very useful, uh, ambient occlusion and so on. So we have a lot of different options there for ways to view the scene and how we can sort of tune the rendering using these different types of info channels. If we switch to the path tracing kernel, you can see that now the specular material renders in a much more realistic way. And we also have some caustic light patterns here behind in the shadows cast on the wall. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can take a closer look at that. Let's also, I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to take our plane here and I'm going to move it up so we can examine those uh, shadows a little bit closer. There we go, there's our robot lineup. So you can see that we have reflections here on the surface, caustic light patterns reflected off of the glossy material, the sort of metallic material, and then of course the caustic light patterns that we see as light passes through the specular transparent surface. You can also see that we have a lot of noise. So there are different ways to deal with that noise. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the other rendering kernel, which is PMC. So PMC is very similar to path tracing, but it does a better job of resolving things like caustics. So we switch to PMC, you can see as it renders, we're still getting a little bit of noise, but there's a little bit more focus in the caustic light pattern. PMC, it works really well in uh, situations where the lighting is somewhat difficult to resolve with path tracing. So for example, if I open up Photoshop here, I have a render that I did earlier, a part of the docking bay scene here up in the corner where I have this kind of energy beam within this glass tube. If I take a look at the direct lighting kernel, you can see it looks nice for the most part, but the lights here, these little energy beams within our tube, within our glass tube, not really rendering correctly. We also have a lot of lighting coming from off camera and from different places. So this is a good example of a kind of a scene that is tricky to render because of the way the lighting is set up. If I, if I switch over to this render, you can see this is rendered with PMC and we get much more uh, accurate uh, reflections and refractions and the way the light comes out of this uh, little energy tube looks a lot better and more realistic. I'm going to switch back over to our little robot lineup here and you can sort of see how the caustics have been rendering here. So let's take a look at the settings within the render kernel. I'm going to switch back to direct lighting. So typically you'll want to start rendering your scene using the direct lighting kernel and see what kind of results you get. And then uh, as the demands of the scene increase, as you add things like specular materials with refractions and caustics and uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, then you might want to try out path tracing and see how far that gets you. And if you're still not happy with the result, then you can switch to PMC. 
But the main thing is you, as you work with each lighting kernel is to pay attention to the settings down here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the most important settings. Of course, all of these are explained in more detail within the documentation. And if you hover over the settings, you'll also get a little sentence that describes what the setting does. Let's talk about the most important ones uh, just right off the bat. Uh, max samples is the most important setting because this sets the maximum number of samples per pixel that Octane will calculate. So as you render the scene, you could probably start with a low setting such as 500 and render the scene or allow the scene to render. And if you still continue to see noise in the scene, then you can raise the setting. But as you can see with this particular scene using direct lighting, uh, 500 samples works pretty well. I'm not seeing a whole lot of noise here. Uh, we also have the global illumination mode uh, that is part of the direct lighting kernel, and we can choose between ambient occlusion and diffuse. Diffuse tends to give you better results. So I'm going to switch to diffuse here, and then we can also take a look at the depth settings. So we have specular, glossy, and diffuse. And usually what I'll do is set this to a low value, such as 1. So this is the specular depth, and this calculates how many times the light bounces are going to be calculated for the specular channel. And as you can see, as setting one, our specular robot turns completely black. So if I set this to two, you can see each time I increase this, we get a little bit more specular bounces and our glass starts to look more like glass. If we reach a point where we don't see any more difference, in the render, then we know that's as high as the setting needs to go for the particular scene. So every scene is definitely going to be different. Set this up to 9. Oh, we're starting to get a little bit more of a transparency and it's looking a little bit better. It's the same kind of workflow for both glossy and diffuse. If I set the glossy depth to 1, we're going to see our sort of metallic looking robot with the glossy shader. Uh, doesn't quite look as good. And if I increase this, we're going to see more glossy bounces you also notice that there is a difference on our specular robot as well because it's fairly reflective. And then, of course, this is the same thing for the diffuse step. I set this to one. You can see we don't get as much light bounces off of the diffuse shaders. So the global illumination doesn't look quite as good. But if I increase this, we start to see more light bounces in the shadows and it starts to look more realistic. So let's switch over to the path tracing kernel. And you can see that now we have the caustic light patterns. Uh, we're getting closer to 500 samples. We'll probably still have a little bit of noise. So let's raise this. Let's set this to 1200. We also have our depth settings, which are similar to what we found in the direct lighting kernel. The settings that I want to take a look at are the caustic blur, which can help reduce the noise in the caustic lighting effects in the shadows. So if I increase this, let's set this to say 0.1, Clearly the caustics aren't going to be quite as sharp, but they'll also be less noisy. So you need to sort of adjust this accordingly, depending on how much you want to see those caustic light patterns and how much you want to reduce the noise. You could also increase the samples and reduce the caustic blur and kind of balance those two settings against each other. The GI clamp determines how much the global illumination is going to be calculated as it passes through transparent surfaces or specular materials. So if I lower this, it will speed up the render time. But if I bring it all the way down, you can see that we don't see any caustics in our shadows. It almost looks like direct lighting in a way. But if I start to increase this just to the point where we start to get some of those caustics in the shadows. But of course, as you raise it, the render time is going to go up a little bit. So again, you can balance this against caustic blur and maximum samples. But if we're just not getting quite the caustic light pattern that we really want, we can always switch to PMC. So let's try PMC. You can see with the same caustic blur setting of 0 0.05, we're still we're getting a little bit better resolution here on the within the shadows. So let's decrease this down to 0.025 and pull up the GI clamp a little bit. And then set our sampling to say 2048. Now I'll reduce the caustic blur down to 0.015. And you can see the results. 
So that covers the basics of working with the different kernels in the Octane integration in Unity. So thanks again for watching.